Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. And one of my favorite JavaScript slash TypeScript game engines out there just got a massive upgrade. We're talking about Babylon JS 6.0, which just just released. We're going to jump in with some demonstrations, and then we will move back from there and get some of the like, the overview details in just a second. So, what is new in this release? Well, this demonstration probably shines a, a light on one of the biggest features of this release. So, this is a physics demonstration in their sandbox. You can see from the frame rates up here, it's running at 50 frames per second now, 28. Four, and uh, yeah, so we're running at four or five frames per second to do the, this simulation using ammo. Well, what you may notice here is there is also Havoc as an option. Now, Havoc uh, is a commercial AAA level um, physics solution. Uh, it is owned by Microsoft, and a lot of the major developers on Babylon JS are from Microsoft. And here, let's see the results here. So we're looking 800 frames per second, and then when the simulation gets into the weeds, it's more like two or 300 frames per second there. So an increase of like a thousand times kind of thing, or at least a hundred times. So it's substantially faster physics simulation because you now have that new Havoc physics simulation in there. This is the first time Havoc for the web has been available. I don't know if it's going to be available as a standalone project outside of Babylon JS, but that is uh, a huge part of this update. Another per part of this update is the new water-based physics. As you can see here, you could basically turn any uh, particle system simulation into a fluid simulation. And here you can see one of the results in action and it looks uh, pretty damn cool, actually. But that's not it. There is also this simulation as well. Let's start this from scratch. And water pours in. You can see how it interacts with the scene. We do have the ability to move this thing around in real time. So you can do real-time water and fluid simulations. So we got nothing in this here. Let's just bring the water through and see how it interacts with our shape. By the way, you can also orbit the this container here uh, and then do slightly different uh, orientation there as well. But if you want to do fluid simulations, they took a big step forward in this release, which is, again, uh, very cool stuff. So if you're working with fluids, uh, huge step forward with Babylon JS 6. Another area that we've got here, and this doesn't demonstrate uh, quite the potential of what it's capable of, but there is new performance mode. So what you're seeing here, this is uh, 2,500 animated spheres, no geometry use, 50 different materials. This is set to backward compatible mode. So if you're trying to run on the biggest variety of devices out there, you can run it in this mode. And what you're seeing is it's taking uh, 12 millis, you see down here, 12 milliseconds per frame. Uh, so I don't want to do the math of dividing that by 60, but you can get an idea of the frame rate out there. And then we can switch here into the performance mode. It's going to start it over. Uh, obviously, you're going to have a little bit less backwards compatibility. Well, right now we have a thousand times when it was doing nothing. But here you're seeing 70% faster. So it's taking nine seconds, nine milliseconds per frame. Obviously, less milliseconds per frame, higher frame rate is basically how that goes. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a very impressive. So you can boost up to like 60% plus going to this um, set to more aggressive mode. Uh, and yeah, you're just getting an outright frame rate increase. By the way, for all of these things, these are available in the playground, which is a very cool feature of Babylon JS. So you can actually come in here, see the code, interact with it, and then see the results over here on this side. Another really cool thing about uh, not really Babylon JS, but a, a recent development happened about a week or two ago. And you're not going to see it in this demo because this browser doesn't support it. But Babylon JS supports WebGPU, and WebGPU is now officially part of Chrome. Uh, at least it's going to be within like a release or two. No needs to turn it on or anything. Thing. Another big part of Babylon JS is this. This is the GUI editor. So if you want to make an interface, you could do it directly here. So let's say we need a container. We can drop a container into our world like so. Uh, and then we need to add some like a, a stack panel or a scroll view or just a label. Put a label in the world. We could do buttons in here and so on. Put things around. That was a a password style. You have your editing tools available over here for lining things up. The cool thing is you can also make things responsive. So then you can pick over here, okay, I want to make this for 4K web. And then it's going to do a layout that way that will automatically scale. Or you can do it to a specific device. So here's an iPhone 12's layout. And you see how your uh, interface will automatically snap around and work in that interface. So it is a really cool UI designer tool. You can see the hierarchy of things you've built over here. Uh, you've got tools over here so you can load it. You can bring in um, snippets and save things and so on. Uh, it is a very uh, powerful tool. Now, this was actually released in, I think it was 5 or 5.1 as beta. Now it's just not beta anymore. So that's 
uh, there and ready for use. So there is a new UI layer uh, up and ready to go. And we actually only kind of scratched the surface of what is in this actual release. Here are the uh, Babylon uh, 6 release notes here. Uh, other details of they got a little video kind of showcasing some of the top new features uh, but the big thing here is again havoc physics have been implemented over there uh, which is really cool what you're seeing is new physics capabilities uh, so you are going to get new physics capabilities and up to 20 times faster performance uh, which is pretty cool again everything is documented you can get links to samples and so on that are available uh, so yeah hit Havoc physics are coming in. On top of that, there is a new API uh, for dealing with physics. So complete overhaul to the API, more power, more control, more features, easier to use. So physics uh, in general got uh, an API overhaul. Uh, and then we've got the performance modes and we actually saw some of it. So um, priority, so knock your socks off performance with all new performance priority modes that produce up to 50 times faster rendering and performance say that one more time for good measure up to 50 times faster now what we saw was 63 percent faster which like in the demo here so the new mode gives developers new control over dialing up the performance of their experience by choosing between backwards compatibility mode intermediate mode or aggressive mode we switch between backward compatible to aggressive so choosing between the three modes gives you a variety of functionality and flexibility you choose performance path that's right for you i gotta imagine that compatibility mode is well the most compatible however so if you want to run across the broadest range of devices that's what you would use if you were just releasing something say for uh current desktop browsers you could probably get ahead with the uh, maximum speed mode and get a performance boost as a result cool thing is i think it's runtime too so you should be able to expose this as a setting to your users and they can pick so if it doesn't work out well they just jump back to the uh the backup mode and it just runs a little bit slower uh then we got fluid rendering in here now uh so running at 60 frames per second you can see we did see this example earlier on uh, we have uh, screen space reflections in here uh, this is what I actually use for the thumbnail this is a VR demo that's in there that's actually recreating the level from back to the future which was actually pretty cool and you can check that one out um, we got textured decals or decals so you can actually put them directly on top of existing surface so this is good for things like uh, blood wounds bullet holes graffiti that kind of stuff uh, and we got uh, node material ray marching uh, this advanced material type allows you to create incredibly complicated and interactive shaders without writing a single line of code then a lot of the plumbing under the hood to make it more powerful than ever uh, uh, with this work, it is now possible for developers to build more advanced 3D graphics techniques into node material shaders, including things like ray marching. So you can see a demo of it for ray marching in action in the examples. Uh, node material triplanner and biplanner projection nodes. Again, the new GUI editor. So it was released in 5.0 as a beta, but it is now considered production ready and good to go. Uh, there is a Figma to Babylon JS community extension. So obviously that was written by someone in community and not the core team. Uh, there is an accessibility screen reader support. Uh, there is new GLTF extension support. Uh, so now fully supports the materials iridescence and animation pointer GLTF extensions and the documentation was reorged and better to go. And the one thing that you're really going to like with this guy, so the documentation is just stellar. It's, it's great in that regard. And of course, they've got the entire sandbox and the playground. You can play around with existing code, figure out how things work and actually deal with it hands on. There's also an in-game editor at any point in time that you can pop up and move the positions of things, interact with them, see their properties and so on. A uh, very cool framework in that regard. Regard. The only thing really missing from Babylon JS, and this is why uh, when it comes to 3D web game development, I would choose between their Babylon JS or Play Canvas. Both are excellent choices. Uh, it's just Play Canvas has more of like an editor, Unity like editor experience, whereas Babylon JS is a little bit more lower level. Now, they add basically the same amount of functionality for sure in the engines themselves, but Play Canvas does have that 3D editor on top, whereas Babylon has an editing. Uh, debugger kind of environment, but both excellent, excellent engines, highly recommended. When it comes to HTML, there's basically four things I recommend. Uh, when it comes to 3D at the higher level, Babylon JS or Play Canvas. Uh, at the intermediate level for 3D, there's Thray JS, which is a lot of these frameworks are built over top of. And then for 2D, there's Phaser. So that's kind of my holy trinity plus one of uh, web-based uh, frameworks that are out there. So if you want to go ahead and check out Babylon.js, it is available at BabylonJS.com. Uh, again, uh, we now have Havoc Physics integrated in, new performance modes, new fluid rendering, uh, screen space reflections. There is a ton in this particular release. By the way, there is also um, a node-based material editor that you can check out. Um, 
We've got the new UI editor on top of it. It's, it's definitely a huge release. And again, they have excellent documentation to get you up and going as well. So there is a full material editor that is visuals that you see here for creating your, your materials, uh, complete interactive tools here. All of your sources are here on the left side. Your settings are available over here on the right. It's very intuitive. Again, the only thing that Babylon JS is basically missing is the 3D world editor. And I know there's a community effort to do this. I just don't know how far along that is. Um, but yeah, Babylon JS 6, huge release lots of new features. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.